Look, there's a um, a guy up there. He's climbing. Hopefully, I've got him because the sun's in my in my way. There's a guy climbing on there. Um, an absolute clown of a person, a fool of a person. Uh, we've got these uh, historical sites here, and this joker is climbing on top of it, um, ruining it, not doing much to preserve it, to take a picture that not that no one will look at. Probably he won't look at. Probably his family won't look at. But the damage that he'll cause um, to the structure is going to be um, a lot. Today I am in the Qutb Minar area, which is, I think it's actually in the area of Meroli or near Meroli, because um, all these areas are quite um, closely confined uh, to each other. The Qutb Minar itself, um, one of the most visited uh, tourist sites in India itself built sometime in the 12th century 1170 1180 um, I haven't got the precise dates with me but somewhere around that time and uh, it's quite a fascinating uh, site a lot of tourists do come here and the actual area itself because Delhi itself is a very crowded city uh, and so finding spaces where there's peace and quiet even though there's you know it's not peace and quiet here relatively compared to what delhi um, normally is um, it's quite nice here and there's a lot of ruins here tombs uh, that show um, really an era that are no longer exists it reminds me a bit of um the roman ruins actually in rome itself just coming up to the Menard itself, it's quite a uh, tall building and, it, and it, at one time they did used to allow you to uh, gain access uh, inside. I can see the doors here itself, the, the doors are shut, but at one time you could get access inside and uh, unfortunately due to whatever reason that's, that's come to an end and it stopped, but just having a look um, around the complex itself it is actually um, surrounded by a wall actually a perimeter wall that allowed that doesn't allow people from the outside to come in so you've got to get a ticket which at the moment is 40 rupees for a Indian 600 for a tourist uh, and if you pay by debit card it's 35 for a Indian and 550 for a foreign tourist so there is that category of difference and one of the things that a foreign tourist will note in india is um the prices that differ between local tourists and foreign tourists and locals you know to be honest to encourage those in large numbers if you charge them 550 600 rupees there wouldn't be a lot of tourists that come here the same also in the Taj Mahal as well it's the same there same um, concept there's a foreign price there's a local price and uh, it's a bit windy today as well so hopefully the sound comes out all right that's always the fear when you're vlogging and uh, the wind is blowing even though there's a lot of technology these days to try and cut down the wind um, it does uh, it does leave you with worry because you don't want a vlog like this to be messed up by the forces of nature just noticed some uh, tombs as well uh, that are located within uh, the complex itself and one of the um, downsides I think to a lot of these uh, heritage sites is uh, yeah actually even though the Kutum Mura itself there's a, there's a lot of places here where they do have uh, information and there's uh, signs that display what the, um, the, the, the the main site is but here we've got these um, tombs here these are uh, there's, there's a there's not anything uh, listed about them which is quite sad uh, that would be um, I think that would help gain a lot of uh, knowledge about these places because you know today let's be honest this is post um oh, actually maybe post is the wrong word post omnicron was what, what i was going to say but now that, that wave is uh, over um you know tourists are coming back 
you know, in, in their droves, I think. Normally, you know, you would, I probably, I think there'd probably be at least double the amount that we've got today, but they're slowly coming back. And uh, there needs to, I think, needs to be a lot more signposts, a lot more information available as to what the, uh, the attraction is. Like, we've got an iron, this, I'm, I'm guessing this is an iron pillar. Now, there are signs here. Yes, it is iron pillar. That's just a fluke, really. Yeah, so you've got a, um, a description that is an iron pillar um, that was just reading the history of this. Um, trying to figure out what dating that it's had. It's, uh, it doesn't actually say the date. Uh, fourth century. Yeah, fourth century. So it is from the fourth century. So the three hundreds. For those of you who, those of you who are not familiar with the centuries, so a long time ago, if I was to put it into more basic uh, language, uh, so that one, that one actually is uh, listed. It's got some information there, but sadly these tombs haven't. So whoever's buried here um, isn't really remembered, um, and which which I think is quite unfortunate because. There's a, you know, I've noticed a lot of things like this, a lot of places, especially in Delhi itself, because it's got a lot of rich uh, Mughal history, Sultanate history, uh, that sadly gets lost because the information is lacking. Uh, more, I think, needs to be done. I know there's the Archaeological Society of India as well that do a lot of work, but I think there's a lot more that needs to be done because I think tourism can be promoted in a big way. Um, in this country, which it, and to be honest, it has it's changed a lot in the time that I've been coming here, and it's something that I think that needs to be done more and more, encourage more tourists. And like I was saying, with the prices, that's why the prices are there. It encourages the locals to come out uh, in their droves, and that's one thing that I hope that carries on. And hopefully, in the next uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, this will grow in big numbers as well. So this is the tomb of Il Tukmish, who was uh, one of the great sultans of Delhi. Now the sultans of Delhi were those that predated the uh, Mughals. The Mughals actually replaced the sultans of Delhi. So the Mughals, uh, who was the first Mughal? Um, ba Babur, Humayun, Akbar, after Akbar, who came after Akbar? Jahangir. Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb, and after that it all fell flat really because Aurangzeb actually um, he stretched his kingdom too much he actually ruled too big an area and his descendants couldn't really handle it they didn't have the uh, same uh, political will so this is the uh, tomb of uh, Il Tutmish and it's this I'm assuming actually that this was covered at one stage the ceilings no longer here is my guess short of anyone confirming that for me that's about the best that I can do but I assume there was a uh, ceiling at one time here this is quite elaborate but then you'd expect that from a uh, you know for a uh, kings, emperors, I mean you can't imagine them being in unmarked graves can you? So uh, I think um, I think he's done all right. I think the Sultan, 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 Sultan in, the, in, the, in the correct way of pronouncing it, Sultan in the more western way of pronouncing it, uh, so I'm catering for both audiences there, uh, of uh, Delhi or Dilli, there's different ways to pronounce that as well, I've heard a variety of ways, I've heard Delhi I've heard Dili, I've heard Dahili, um, probably another couple in there as well, ways of pronouncing it. Everyone has their way to pronounce it, their ways to pronounce the cities in India. It's crazy, it's crazy when you hear different ways to pronounce things. Everyone has their own way of pronouncing it. I always say Delhi when I'm talking to local people. I always say Delhi when I'm speaking to foreigners. Just got a habit of habit of saying it really. Look, there's a um, 
a guy up there is climbing. Hopefully, I've got him because the sun's in my in my way. There's a guy climbing on there, um, an absolute clown of a person, a fool of a person. Uh, we've got these uh, historical sites here, and this joker is climbing on top of it, um, ruining it, not doing much to preserve it, to take a picture that not that no one will look at. Probably he won't look at. Probably his family won't look at. But the damage that he'll cause um, to the structure is going to be um, a lot. I mean, this isn't what places like this are for, uh, for taking uh, pictures of you fooling around like a buffoon, um, showing high levels of buffoonery in a uh, place that's um, of archaeological importance. Um, this is sadly a sign of the times because more people are interested in taking pictures rather than viewing the site. See, there's someone blowing a whistle as well. He hasn't noticed. Yeah. The clown just hasn't noticed. Yeah, there he is. Look, he's jumping off now. You know, that's his uh, stupidity of the day, I think. There, the, the guard's coming. The guard is... The guard was there, he's going to give him a lecture now, there, he's going up to him now. There, look, look, see, see, see it. There, the security is telling him off. And so he should as well, quite right. He's going up there. Climbing up there. Acting like an idiot. Um, I can't believe that. He just climbed up there. Ran up there actually, not even climbed, he ran up there. Ran faster than probably a same boat to get up there because he wanted to take a picture that you could show his mates. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. There's so many places here where you can take photos. Uh, so many vantage points that you can take photos that are allowed. Why climb up something that is probably around a thousand years old? You know, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. There's people like that that, that give. Place, you know, tourists a bad name. Um, I'm not sure what he is actually. I wouldn't even class him as a tourist, I'd class him as an idiot. There should be punishment, there should be fines for people like that. So, here, the Kutub Manar again. I was just walking down and noticed it. I actually got so engrossed in that fall that I lost um, track of where I was. And I'm walking again up to the, the Kutub Minar, which uh, features a lot in um, films. There's actually been quite a lot of Indian films where this has been used as a backdrop. A lot of photo shoots, um, it's, it's in, in a number of them. They don't come to my mind now. I'm not really an Indian film buff, to be honest. So it's not something, information that's readily um, in my mind. History, yes, I can normally come up with something short of precise dates without reading them in general, but in general, I have an idea of what's, what's going on because I have an interest in history anyway. Just did a uh, circle of the Kutub Minar, so that's, I think offhand, I think it's about 72, 73, 74 meters, some, something around, around that um, measurement, it, is, it rings a bell. Just coming up, thankfully there's another sign here, this is called Alai Darwaza, the southern gateway of the Kuwat al-Islam Mosque is known as Alai Darwaza, Darwaza means uh, gateway, doorway, door where Khal Khalji 1296-1316 extended the mosque. The, the Alai Darwaja is a magnificent square domed building with intricate carvings in red sandstone and marble. So let's have a look. Yeah, actually. See, this is what's, you know, lurking behind this complex because you don't see this from from far and I guess a lot of tourists actually when they come to the Qutub Minar they just come because of the Qutub Minar and they haven't got a clue what else stands in this uh, complex. I didn't know this was here. I didn't have a clue this was here. So you learn something. So you learn something coming to these places that that fool who was climbing on the uh, you know the um, stones I haven't got a word for it, the, um, the, the stones that were there. Part, they've probably formed part of a wall at one stage or, or a building and they are in ruins now and he's climbing up them. Actually, I've got to get that fool out of my mind because the fool's going to put me off. 
off uh, this magnificent complex area. You know, I've got no time for fools now. Actually, that's, that's out of my mind now. The fool is gone. Uh, he's probably gone as well. I hope he's been kicked out of this place, but... Or well, he's not kicked out. At least he's been uh, given a firm lecture by the, uh, the guard, the security guard who came and told him, look, don't mess with uh, these, uh, these sites. These are heritage sites. They are part of um, Indian history. Uh, this is what tourists come to look for. This is what students come to research. This is what people come to learn. So we don't need your antics messing things. So I'm going to put that fool out of my mind now and enjoy my time here. And this, this is actually what I like. See, this is what I mean. He could stand here. Uh, actually, I'm talking about him. I'm not supposed to put him out of my mind. So I'm not going to talk about him. But talking about vantage points or places to take photos, there's lots of places where you can stand here and get uh, good... Uh, photos, good uh, selfies, good whatever uh, that you can take of this place rather than um, standing on top of uh, you know the, the site that is here but it's still um, you know something hard to get out of my mind but it will it will come out of my mind because you have to make the most of when you're here because you never know if you could cut if you're able to make another visit uh, to a place like this fascinating place fascinating is it just looking at this i think you know one thing i will say actually about you delhi is very crowded and coming here looking at the space and you know if you are a tourist a few places where i would say you should go where you will get a lot of peace and quiet and a lot of tranquility are places like uh the minar complex um lodi gardens i met boris johnson the prime minister of the UK at Lodi Gardens actually a few years ago um, which I got a photo of as well uh, Boris who was foreign minister at that time and uh, we had a good discussion on politics well he spoke I listened and uh, Lodi Gardens is one uh, I would say visit probably Humayun's tomb that's another one where you could go uh, avoid the taxi drivers outside Humayun's tomb though because uh, they will um, grab you as soon as you come out and uh, overcharge you. Go out outside of the uh, complex main street, you get charged about half. So there's a tip there, there's a tip for you as well, see? Alongside seeing buffoons who climb on top of stones that are thousand years of age, you also get to hear about tips as well to make your journey economical and uh, worthy. Even uh, in a place like this, there's a lot of greenery here, a lot of um, areas where you can sit down and uh, relax. You know, I've seen a lot of parks actually around the world. Uh, in London itself, we have a lot of parks, Hyde Park, um, one of them, St. James's Park, many others. Central Park in New York, but when you come to places like this, not only do you have uh, the park to relax in, but you've got structures that are over a thousand years old. You know, what more do you want? What more do you want in life? In fact, if I had a lot more time, I would actually do a full day here. I would do a lot more than the time I'm gonna spend in this place. Because there's a lot, there's a lot to see here, a lot to do. You know, there's no restriction in terms of uh, bringing uh, drinks and stuff here. It's, it's, you could actually sit here and relax for quite a while, as long as you don't make a mess, of course, you know. But then again, if that fool is here, God knows what he would do. He'd probably come turn up with, um... actually, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get the fool out of my mind because the more I talk about the fool, the more that it puts a downer on things. So let's not talk about the fool. But look at this pathway that's here. Let's just show you from the bottom upwards. There's a guy maintaining it as well. There's a pathway that goes up to another structure. So stone structure. So let's see if uh, there are any signs that explain what this structure is because I hope there is. I, hope, I really hope there is something because I would like to know what this is what this was. Did this form part of a fortification? 
Was it a house? Oh, it's got a sign here. Thankfully, thankfully. Kolji's tomb. In what? This is part of. So let's have a look at Kolji's tomb. Look at the uh, the work, the craftsmanship, the level of detail that's gone in to this place. Yeah, just looking at this. Yeah, this is painstaking work. You know. And people should be appreciating this, and I hope they are. And oh, well, look, look what I found. Foreign tourists. They are here. I found the foreign tourists at the Qutub Minar. So not only do we have locals, but we have the foreign tourists. And uh, from what I can tell, the, sp the language they're speaking is uh, possibly Russian. Um, I don't want to assume it could be from the language of Belarus or Ukraine or any one of the countries of the former Soviet bloc Tajikistan, Ar Armenia, Azerbaijan could be any of those countries so I don't want to assume I just said Russian it was the first one that came to my mind whenever I ever accent uh, a language um, of that nature I think it's um, uh, Russian but that's my time at the uh, Qutub Minar over and it's come to an end I've enjoyed my time here uh, so I would say, please spend whatever money it is that the uh, ticket uh, for the ticket requirements. If you're a local, if you're a foreigner, because these things need to be preserved so that a thousand years time, these still things are still here. So please do come here. Uh, the tourists are back. Uh, I don't think they're in the numbers that they normally are, uh, which is a good thing today actually because I managed to get in quite quickly. But do come here, view everything that's here because it's not just the Qutb here itself, the Qutb Minar. Um, there's a lot more here that uh, hopefully I've brought some of it to you and you know research before coming here spend a lot you know spend half a day at least here if not more uh, because it's worth it and I think um, it will leave you with uh, memories that will last a while so from the Qutb Minar it's goodbye